methods for finding the closed formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences. Since we know how to compute the sum of the first n terms of arithmetic and geometric sequences, we can compute the closed formula for sequences which have an arithmetic or geometric sequence of differences between terms. But what if we consider a sequence which is the sum of the first n terms of another sequence, which is itself the sum of an arithmetic sequence? Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanna mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. Okay, before we get too carried away, let's consider an example. How many squares of all sizes are there on a chessboard? A chessboard consists of 64 squares, but we also want to consider squares of longer side length. Even though we are con only considering an 8x8 chessboard, there's already a lot to count. So instead, let's build a sequence. The first term in this sequence, and let me make some space on my whiteboard here, the first term in our uh, sequence will be the number of squares on a one by one chessboard, which looks something like that. The second term will be the number of squares on a two by two chessboard, and so on. After a little thought, we arrive at the sequence one for the first one, five for the second one. There's one, two, three, four, and five, the whole thing, and then 14. 30, 55, and so forth. This sequence is not arithmetic, or geometric for that matter, but perhaps its sequence of differences is. For differences, we get four, nine, 16, 25, and so forth. Okay, not a huge surprise. One way to count the number of uh, squares in a four by four chessboard is to notice that there are 16 squares with side length one, nine, with uh, nine with side length two, four with side length three, and one with side length four. So the original sequence is just the sum of squares. Now this sequence of differences is not arithmetic, since the sequence of differences is not constant. In fact, the sequence of second differences is five, seven, nine, and so forth which is an arithmetic sequence with constant difference two. Notice that our original sequence had third differences, constant. That is, differences of differences of differences of the original, constant. We will call such a sequence delta three constant. The sequence one, four, nine, 16, and so forth has second differences constant, so it will be a delta two constant. In general, we will say a sequence is delta k constant if the kth differences are constant. Let's do an example together. And so, yes, these are delta 3 constant. I should clarify that. Let's do an example together. Which of the following sequences are delta k constant for some value of k? So for the first one, this is the sequence from a previous video in which we found a closed formula by recognizing the sequence as a sequence of partial sums of an arithmetic sequence. Indeed, the, the, um, the sequence of first differences is 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, and so forth, which itself has differences 3, 3, 3, 3, and so forth. Thus, this sequence right here is a delta squared constant sequence, delta two constant. Okay, these, for number two, these are perfect cubes. The sequence of first differences is seven, nine, thir 37, excuse me. Sorry, I got this wrong. Seven, 19, 37, 61, 91, and so forth. Okay, the sequence of second differences is 12, 18, 24, 30, and so forth. Okay, we're getting somewhere. The sequence of third differences is constant. Six, 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 and so forth. Thus, the perfect cubes here are delta Q constant, delta three constant. 
For number three, if we take first differences, we get one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so forth. That's the sequence we started with. So taking second differences will give us the same sequence again. No matter how many times we repeat this, we will always have the same sequence, which in, in particular means no finite number of differences will be constant. Thus, the sequence is not delta k constant for any k. So that's our kind of generic proof. This will just go on forever and so never constant. And so it is not delta k constant for any value k. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next lecture.